In doing some research around the coconut, it turns out that TF2 doesn't care if you delete literally all your textures. You are allowed to play with the mess of purple and black everywhere. But if you really wanted to, how playable is it? And also, what does TF2 care about? Is there a bottom line on what you can delete, or can you have absolutely nothing? First, playing with no textures. You're allowed to join official Valve casual servers, and play like this if you want. I tried it out. With no textures, I didn't really get lost since map geometry was distinct enough. Here are a bunch of random maps. You should be able to recognize where you are, even though it's all purple and black. And because of TF2's Fong shading, the white glow that helps player models stand out from the background, players are actually recognizable. You can tell there's someone in front of you, and what class they are too, thanks to TF2's distinct silhouettes. Side note, with Fong shading off, it really makes it obvious how big of a difference Fong shading can make in visibility. But there are three main problems that basically make it too difficult to play with. Problem 1. Team colors. Players on both teams look the same. You could use context to infer who to shoot, but sometimes you'll be in a situation where you really don't know who to shoot. It's possible to use your crosshair like a metal detector and check if the target ID pops up when you look at someone, but in scrappy fights you obviously wouldn't have the time to manually check everyone. Players who are ubered or crits are also very difficult to discern. Problem 2. Transparency. Because the no texture texture doesn't innately have any transparency, textures that are partly transparent and partly fully visible just entirely block your view. Glass windows and fences are examples of this problem. Oh, and Wrangler shield becomes a solid sphere. And worst of all, problem 3, distortion effects. Whenever you get jurodied or ubered, a wavy distortion effect gets applied. The distortion effects work by using a texture file, so when it goes missing and becomes a purple and black checkerboard instead, it gets bad. Here's how it looks with normal textures. The distortion effect comes up when you bleed, step in the gas passer, get jurodied, get ubered or jump into water. But most hilariously, it becomes incredibly difficult to use the sniper scope. So besides textures, what else can we delete? You are allowed to delete all your sounds, and because there isn't a no sound sound, TF2 just becomes almost complete silence. Almost, because a few TF2 sounds are from Half-Life 2, and some default back to being a Half-Life sound. Most notably, the clicking sounds and menus. Some of the generic gameplay sounds, and the rocket explosion noise. The Half-Life 2 fallback thing also randomly happens with textures. The loading background gets defaulted to a Half-Life 1, windows on upward are replaced, and there's a lot of windows on snake water. Some older maps like Badlands make use of Half-Life textures, such as the hazard strips and stairs, so they're still visible. Besides sounds, there's the MISC VPK files, which contain all the model and scripts. TF2 finally draws the line here. You can delete most of the MISC VPK files, but not files 0, 1, and 5. Without file 0, TF2 finally crashes and gives you an error stating that it can load surface properties. Surface properties is a text file that lists all of the kinds of map surfaces within the game. So when you walk around on different surfaces, you hear different footstep noises. 
This sounds really unimportant, and that's because it is. There is really no reason TF2 couldn't keep going without knowing which footstep sounds to play, but a programmer just decided to draw the line there. After you have file 0, the game will still crash. You need to have file 1, which contains player and building models, and file 5 for the game to run. File 5 is 106 megabytes of random stuff, such as this crank, MVM cache, and the 2 for cow. So I can't even guess what might be so important in here. So let's just say the cow stops TF2 from falling apart. With these three files present, TF2 mostly works. In certain circumstances, when you clip into something, it causes this smearing effect. In our barebones TF2, we're missing something that makes the skybox work. So anytime you see the sky, the smearing effect happens. Killing any other class is okay, but killing the medic instantly crashes the game. And of course, there's errors everywhere where models are supposed to be. But you can queue into a Valve server, not because the server doesn't let you join, but because you literally don't have the HUD files for the matchmaking menu, so there's no queue button to click. You need Ms. VPK 16. After that, you can join no problem. But why just delete TF2 files? Why don't we also get rid of the base Half-Life 2 files? Just like tf 2's surface properties, the game won't launch if you don't have the Half-Life 2 surface properties, so you need to have HL2 MISC 0. The Half-Life 2 loading background is also essential for some reason, so you need HL2 Textures 0. Other than that, you can get rid of everything else. Obviously, without even the Half-Life stuff, the game is now completely silent, and there are no fallback textures. Interestingly, because there are not even Half-Life textures, Glass now works again. But in this state, the game is very literally only technically playable. For some reason, animations are now incredibly broken. But if you're okay with this, you can still join Valve casual servers. So this is what you actually need at minimum to play TF2. TF2 and Half-Life 2 surface properties, player models, the 2 Fort Cal, and a blurry picture of Half-Life 2. I, can't, I have never in my life had anything. I have nothing.